All right, welcome back to another video on the Roland TR-8S. This time we're going to focus on a couple of issues some of the users have been having with recording and playing in Ableton Live. Uh, these tricks should work for any DAW, but I have Ableton Live, so this is what we're going to use. Anyway, first thing you need to do is get your tier 8 s set up for MIDI in Ableton and the most basic way to do that is to hold hit utility hold shift scroll till you get to sync tempo make sure tempo sync is in auto sync out is on and receive start stop is on under MIDI you want to make sure Omni mode I keep it on and that the USB MIDI through and soft through are on. That's all I've changed and this seems to work. Anything further is up to you. Also I'd like to note to help with the doubling up sound that is happening when playing the tr 8 s through Ableton. It's a good idea if you can do it to run your mix out and your assignable out one and two run both of those out to two separate channels on an external mixer if you cannot do that then simply take your jacks out of mix one and two and stick them into the assignable out one and two and this way you will not hear a doubling sound when playing stuff through Ableton so that's all you need for your TR-8S and now to show you what we need to do in Ableton Now in Ableton, I have here opened up my TR-8S blank template that has all my channels for all my instruments, including the external in, to record anything that might be plugged into your external in. So all the audio is coming from external input, which is the TR-8S, and starting with channel 3 and working your way to channel 13, you can have each of your instruments and the external in. For my demo, all audio is going to master. And once you have all that set, go ahead and open up your preferences. Your audio device should be a core audio for Mac and an ASIO driver for Windows. Your input and output device is the TR-8S. Your input configuration should have all the monos lit up and your one and two stereo lit up. And your output by default will have oops, one and two. That is your mix out of the TR-8S. Now you want to disable that so you're not getting that double up sound. And you're going to highlight three and four, which is your assignable out one and two. That takes care of your audio. Um, I run my buffer size down to 15 samples, the lowest it can go to keep any latency out of the way. Um, over on your MIDI tab, your input should be TR-8S, and I also have the TR-8S CTRL, and same with your output, TR-8S and TR-8S CTRL. In your MIDI ports, it should look like this. Your inputs both on and both sync and your output on and sync with track on as well for the first output your TR-8S control output simply leave track on do not put sync on press the, or click the triangle on the first output for the TR-8S this will open up the MIDI clock sync delay and MIDI clock type uh, Ableton recommends for drum machines and machines of that sort to run it in a pattern type not song type. I've only had to adjust my sync delay by half a millisecond into the negative. It might be a little different depending on how much latency you have in your audio setting. Anyway, those are your settings and your preferences. Close that and then we'll go ahead and play Make sure, sorry, uh, when you do change the 3-4 that you change your cue out and master out 
two, three, four. So it will go out your assignable out. That takes care of that, and that will take care of your uh, doubling sound. Because I'll show you if we do real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Output. We'll highlight those two. Okay. So over here, if we take this and we send our master out to one and two, which is the master out on the Roland, we'll get this kind of situation. We'll arm the bass drum so you can hear the bass drum. And with MIDI all set up, you should get it playing. So this is getting kind of a doubled up sound. Or to that is just the Roland. When you bring in Ableton, you got that there. Now, if I send it over to 3 4, now you just have your just the Roland and then just Ableton. So, running to a separate external mixer allows me to mute each channel on the mixer and I don't have to mess with the master volume on the Roland. So the, there you go. By sending it to your assignable outs you can get rid of the doubling up sound. It's kind of apparent in bass drums but when you start getting into melodies and other things like that you can really hear the difference and if your latency is a little bit off you'll hear almost a doubling. Uh, fixing your latency and MIDI sync delays will bring them a little tighter together to help with the situation but my ultimate fix is to send them out the assignable outs and send your master out that way. That way you can just turn your master volume down on the Roland. Now let's get into recording and making sure that everything's getting recorded in sync on beat with the roll with the Ableton. Uh, Ableton does recommend turning off the monitoring for what you're recording, just for the simple fact that it, with the monitoring on, it introduces latency throughout the whole thing, which will shift everything behind, and it really affects the first kick. So with your adjustments how they are and you were to keep monitoring on and you start recording so with the monitoring on you have that it looks almost spot on but here is one two here's where your second kick should start and it's starting a bit off so if we take this get rid of that. We'll turn off our monitoring back to the beginning and try it again. Now we go to one two right there. You're starting right on beat, right on time. The only place you'll find a little bit of softness and I think this has to do with the clip maybe there's a fade into it that you can remove but that first one always has what looks like 0 0.002 seconds of latency almost indistinguishable um, but with a little bit of mucking about you might be able to get rid of that so that's how you record it or play and have everything still in sync with Ableton. That should be enough to get you guys started, get you busy, and keep you busy. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, or if you're a part of the Facebook group Roland TR8S, leave a comment or question there. Uh, a bunch of good people there that have a lot of knowledge that can help out, so join up. And as far as the videos, if you're enjoying them, please subscribe so you can be informed of more. Give it a like if you like it. And as 
always, thanks for watching.